Um, I think we'll get the um, session started. Uh, welcome everybody to this um, this workshop uh, being run by the Eurogoose Ocean Literacy Group um, uh, around um, accessible ocean literacy. Um, so I will hand over to our um, to our to our uh, panelists for this session, uh, starting with Dina. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this workshop. Uh, many thanks to Commotion for allowing us to hold this workshop and hopefully to um, mind map some of the uh, ideas about making ocean literacy accessible. And thank you for NOC for hosting this particular call right now uh, for our workshop today. And uh, Lucy, who is also a member of our ocean literacy network in Urugus. So I'm Dina Parkina. I facilitate this activity in Urugus. I'm policy and communications officer uh, in uh, Brussels. Um, the agenda for today is um, in the chat box. Please follow this link. And just a few housekeeping rules, which I'm sure you already are familiar with. This uh, meeting is now in a meeting uh, mode of Zoom, so uh, you are able to unmute yourself at any moment. So please mute your mics when, while you don't speak. There will be opportunity, hopefully, for you all to share ideas during the uh, discussion session at the end. Okay, the sound is just too low. I will, <clears throat> I will speak up. <laughs> there will be opportunity to, um, to share ideas during the discussion session. So the idea for this workshop emanated from the uh, survey we conducted within the Urugu's ocean literacy activities among various organizations, uh, members of uh, Urugu's, Met offices, oceanographic agencies, hydrographic agencies. How uh, active are they in ocean literacy? What kind of activities they do? And we were quite surprised by the wealth of activity, but we also saw that there are some gaps. And one of these gaps is the accessibility. So this triggered us to hold this workshop today, the Science Communication Conference, Commotion, to discuss how to make uh, our messages accessible to all, how to, um, leave the comfort zone of familiar settings and talking to familiar audiences in familiar ways and how to really reach out to society in the way that we would like to. So um, we will hear today from accessibility expert Valeria Bataliko, and we will have a discussion on these findings uh, uh, all together at the end of the workshop. But first, I'm happy to introduce two members of the Eurogoose Ocean Literacy Group who will set the scene for our discussions. First, it's uh, Paula Agostini, a biologist uh, with PhD in analysis and governance of sustainable development. She worked at the European Commission DG Research, DG Research Innovation and since 2013, she is with uh, CMCC, uh, Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, uh, CMCC Foundation in Italy. Uh, she's working on project management, fundraising, strategic relationships and science communication. And she's a member of our OSHA literacy activities. So first, the floor is yours, Paula, please. You can share your screen now. Yes. Thank you, Dina, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm sharing my screen at the moment. I, I guess it works and that you can also hear me. OK, so actually, in, uh, Dina introduced me with my prof professional life. But today, I'm going to speak about uh, a personal experience that we thought may be useful as a preliminary introduction to the discussion about how ocean literacy can be accessible in different places. And my experience is about uh, uh, being part of an association that does uh, clown therapy uh, in Italy. It is called Viviamo in Positivo Italia. Uh, it's a federation. Uh, the translation in English is uh, Living in Positive. And uh, it's a federation of 70 uh, local associations all over the country. And we are more than 5,000 clowns. Uh, in Lecce, the city I live and work, we are a group of uh, 60 uh, clowns. And we do our voluntary service in two hospitals, in one retirement home. And if we are called, for example, by a group of uh, parents of uh, autistic kids or other similar uh, occasions. The mission uh, of the whole federation of uh, my group in Lecce is, of course, uh, the clown therapy. As you may know, clown therapy stems from the idea 
starting in hospitals that um, hospitalize people and people that are in suffering uh, or in um, um, in conditions uh, difficulty uh, difficulties um, condition uh, may improve or may have an added value by the fact that they have a moment of joy of relief uh, or laughter. And this concept has then been translated also in other, uh, other contexts, uh, like uh, prisons, like retirement homes uh, or orphanages. We also have uh, as association uh, uh, missions uh, in uh, southern, uh, um, southern America or Eastern European countries where also poverty is an element of uh, difficulty. And uh, the, the thing is that the clown is a figure that can be easily related to because itself uh, is uh, the combination of the fact that it's clumsy, that is uh, always in difficulties, but with a positive attitude. And that's the, the message that we want to transmit uh, to the people we meet, especially in hospitals. We have uh, seven values that guide our uh, um, work. Uh, um, I do not have the time to go into details, maybe later if you want. Uh, I, I just want to say that the most important thing is this one. <laughs> So it's the, the red nose <laughs> that it actually always brings a smile or whatever you, uh, you put it on, uh, on the people around you. And that's the starting point. So what we do in practice in Lecce, for example, we uh, do our service in uh, uh, two uh, pediatric units of the hospital in Lecce and uh, two uh, adult units, oncology and hematology. We used to unfortunately we stopped uh, since March uh, because of the pandemic and we are really hoping to to get back soon uh, we go there in the afternoon during the weekends we spend the afternoon with uh, with the patients with the family of the patients and also with the sanitary staff they really need if you think about the moment we are living a moment of break and the work and have uh, some um, laugh or some uh, uh, just a joke uh, with, with other people and we are dressed up, as you may see. We we play magic tricks. Uh, we do uh, storytelling with the kids. Uh, we run in the corridors if we if we can. Uh, we perform sketches uh, with the adults. Uh, uh, we um, do shapes, uh, uh, balloons, anything that can uh, make this uh, laugh and, and uh, enjoyable uh, um, uh, feeling for the people that are there. Uh, so uh, thinking about this uh, experience, uh, I highlighted some of the aspects that uh, I think may be important uh, uh, to be um, considered also when ocean literacy comes in, this, in these uh, places. And the first thing is the place itself, so the, the hospital. Uh, an hospital is not a classroom, is not uh, a laboratory, is not an office. It has very um, specific constraints. Uh, there aren't the same uh, tools uh, you may use uh, in your uh, uh, normal communication like uh, laptops and screens. Um, there aren't uh, common rooms sometimes, you just have the single rooms of the patients. Um, and there aren't, uh, um, so the, 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 the communication is sometimes it's just uh, yourself uh, being with, uh, with the patients. Uh, the other aspect is about the timing in, in the sense that you may plan to spend, I don't know, 20 minutes in a room with, uh, with patients, but this can uh, abruptly change for any reasons, because there is an emergency, because you also feel that the patients are getting tired, uh, because uh, dinner is served, uh, I don't know, anything that actually... Um, uh, um, break uh, your flows of, of communication has to be rearranged. And then, of course, there are all the sanitary protocols. Uh, as an association, even before the pandemic, we had very strict uh, rules. So you have to clean everything. We change our clothes, uh, uh, and they are used only in the hospitals. Um, we clean our hands from room to room. We try not to, to get into direct contact with the patients. And uh, if you have seen from my previous pictures, the one above, uh, we have to wear also additional sanitary um, uh, clothes when we enter specific uh, units like dermatology. And you may imagine that um, being uh, with patients lying on a bed with instruments, uh, sanitary instruments around, and having also your mouth uh, covered by the mask limits a lot the communication, which has to be rearranged uh, con in consideration of the eye contact, of your body language, and, and your voice, of course. So that's about the uh, location. The other aspects uh, I want to uh, underline is about uh, the, the people. 
here people are mainly the patients, but as I said, the, it's, it can be the family. If you have a, a kid of a few months, of course, the communication is quite limited, but you have the mothers, you have the fathers, or I mean, the, the parents over there that may need the support as well, and, um, and the sanitary staff. And people different uh, in terms of ages, like, uh, as I said, in the pediatric units we go, sometimes you have a few uh, kids of a few months, uh, seven, eight years old, but also teenagers. And in the adult units, you have uh, people up to more than eight years old. And this way, the communication and the way you interact with them has to be, of course, uh, uh, different. Uh, also different are the attitudes. Uh, a kid of seven years old, when you enter the hospital, your hosp their hospital room is always uh, happy to see you. They are welcoming you warmly. Uh, you have to uh, find a way to get out because they would like to have you there always. This is not the case uh, uh, sometimes with the teenagers because you know teenagers are focusing on the smartphones. Uh, they think they are adult, uh, so they you have to find a way to get their attention. And this is not always also the case with the adults. Um, there are often uh, feelings uh, from adults. Uh, uh, that uh, when you enter, especially uh, some uh, uh, delicate uh, units like oncology, that uh, this is not the place for, for laugh and clowns are for kids and not for adults. And this is something that we try to, to overcome as much as possible, of course, with respect to all the, the opinions and the, the, the feelings of the patients, but we try to overcome it to find a way, any way to interact, because at the end we realize that they realize that um, that the prejudice uh, is uh, is actually something uh, um, not true, and that they can benefit from our presence and from this small moment of uh, relief uh, and, uh, and joy. And then in payments is another element. Of course, capacities are different, and your communication has to be adapted to the to these different uh, capacities and different uh, situations of uh, of the patients. Final thing is about, uh, I thought about two elements of methods. Well, the second one is uh, something that I already said with everything I said before. So it's about the flexibility, the fact that you have to improvise, the fact that you have to uh, change and rearrange uh, quickly, and also to use your imagination and the imagination of the patients in, uh, since you do not have uh, all the tools available to turn a room in the hospital into something else, into a fairy tale's world uh, or uh, something that is, is, has this uh, positive element. But the most important of these two elements, I think, is understanding and listening. We are trained as, as for everything else as clowns uh, to, to listen and to have the sensibility to understand uh, the feelings uh, of the people you are meeting. You enter a room and in this room, there may be people that are happy to see you, people that do not want to be disturbed, those that are uh, physically impaired, anything can be there and you have to have the ability to understand it, to keep this attention to the feelings for all the, the period of the service. So for four hours, this attention has to always be active because they may get tired, they may be the, the patient can, can be bored or there is an emergency, everything, and you have to rearrange quickly. Uh, so that, that was uh, it. I thank you very much. I hope these uh, few things may help in the discussion afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paula. Um, now I will introduce Angela Pomara. Uh, who is a research scientist at the Institute of Marine Sciences at the National Research Council of Italy, um, CNR ISMAR. And besides her research in physic as physical oceanographer, she's also involved in uh, dissemination projects and is representing uh, uh, CNR in the ocean literacy activity of Urugus. So now we will hear some other take on accessibility uh, from uh, Angela and the activities of ocean space. Please, the floor is yours. You should unmute your mic. Okay, I was saying thank you, Dina, and hello, everybody. I'm sharing my screen now. I hope it works. Can you see it? Okay, thank you. 
Um, so uh, I will um, uh, give uh, uh, an overview of another initiative that uh, we are uh, starting. It's brand new, so I will not draw much conclusions, but put uh, uh, the basis of uh, on how it um, it has it, it began. Uh, and, uh, and leave the floor to discussion later to analyze uh, what we should do as a uh, as research community. So um, the project is called Abecedarium, the Ocean in Sign Language, and uh, it is, uh, which is a really important, a collaboration between uh, CNR, the National Research Council of Italy, and in particular the institute I work in, which is the Institute of Marine Sciences, based in Venice, and the Ocean Space. Uh, uh, and the TBA 21 Academy. Uh, the Ocean Space, uh, I will tell you later, is a big uh, uh, institution that just uh, opened up in uh, Venice. Oh, just a moment, okay. Uh, and I will tell you more a bit later. Um, what about uh, our experience with uh, dissemination activities or ocean literacy activities at the National Research Council of Italy? Uh, we have always uh, carrying out, uh, uh, been carrying out uh, research, uh, communication projects uh, or dissemination activities towards schools, uh, students, uh, teachers, and also to the general public, uh, because it is also one of the key uh, missions of uh, uh, our um, institution, our research institution. But we soon realized that uh, in order to reach a wider public uh, and to really make uh, effective the effort of disseminating the topics of research uh, that we carry out as a research scientist was necessary to uh, try to go beyond and specifically to um, make connections uh, to work as a network with professionals also of other sectors. We started uh, then experimental projects in this field uh, uh, about four years ago the really first one, uh, I call it experimental because uh, we started and it was quite uh, challenging uh, as research scientists to start a dialogue with uh, experts from other disciplines. In, uh, 2000, in 2017, we uh, opened a dialogue with an artist, Shazad Davoud, for the development of uh, this project called Leviathan, Human and Marine Ecology. Uh, that brought uh, contributions from uh, several disciplines, not only the artistic point of view of the artist, that was uh, the one that uh, triggered the discussion uh, that started uh, open, uh, opening uh, this idea of discussing uh, key aspects of the research uh, uh, together with uh, also experts from so so uh, sociological disciplines uh, and, um, and others. Uh, it was challenging because uh, it was uh, even difficult uh, to find our own place as re research scientists in this dialogue. Uh, most of some of the colleagues, for instance, started uh, think thinking as, the, as if they were artists, which is exactly what we didn't want. So it is always um, also this part of the, the, the collaboration uh, uh, was found out to be interesting. We continued with another project uh, for the 2018 Biennale. The project now was called Prospecting Ocean with the artist uh, Armin Link. And in, uh, with this, uh, in this occasion, we met with the TBA 21 Academy that now turned, uh, turned out to be our uh, stable uh, partner for several dissemination activities and also the Abecedarium, of course. Uh, last year, we, we, we were able to create the first Biennale Pavilion at the Art Biennale in Venice uh, with the Arts Council of New Zealand, which was uh, quite a um, new experience uh, for us. What's relevant with this project is the challenging aspect of the dialogue, but also uh, the fact that we really uh, managed to reach uh, a wider public and publics coming from very different uh, areas of knowledge um, that put also um, that opened uh, other questions about how to uh, create more effective ocean literacy initiatives. In our opinion, or at least at, according to our experience, uh, the key aspect is really to join competencies and efforts. So in this, uh, in this, uh, with, with this idea in mind, we uh, created a um, solid partnership with the ocean space, which is uh, represented in this picture by the beautiful uh, 
church uh, that you see here. It has been recently renovated and it hosts um, a public uh, uh, place uh, for uh, collaborative projects, for exhibitions, uh, for um, uh, catalyzing ocean literacy and um, other initiatives uh, that, um, that produce communication and dissemination uh, efforts through the arts mainly because uh, TBA 21 uh, born, um, is originally a foundation that uh, is more connected to the arts world. So starting with uh, from this point, we then launched uh, just in, uh, at the end of October. So it's quite uh, new, this project, Abecedarium, the Ocean in Sign Language. It is, uh, as I mentioned, an interactive project, which was conceived and curated by Valeria Bottalico, that uh, will uh, give the keynote to this session later. She is an education accessibility, accessibility expert uh, working at the ocean space. And, um, uh, and the aim of the project is to uh, now try to work on the um, theme of accessibility. So how to make uh, the um, contents of uh, scientific research uh, really accessible to all. I say to all because, of course, the project uh, um, is working with a specific community, the community of deaf people. Uh, the idea is to really involve uh, actively this community because uh, um, they will need to create the new glossary of science relating to the ocean and climate um, issues. Uh, we realized that um, they even don't have uh, even don't have the words which are for them the signs to talk about ocean science. So it will be an experimental project in the sense that we also do not know the level at which they are starting. So there, it will be a dialogue that will bring um, together both the scientists, uh, we are contributing in this respect, deaf people with their experiences, of course, which are different even among this community, through the help and uh, the, um, the, um, the assistance, of course, of uh, professionals in the field of education and uh, training um, from the ocean space. Uh, so mm, the, the, the project has been launched publicly. It will be, of course, uh, uh, Italian uh, based in, uh, in the, at the beginning because also the sign language is declinated in uh, the different uh, countries. But the idea is that the project could be even transnational because uh, the, sign, the sign language, if the format works, it will be easy to create new network uh, activities also with other countries. And so to bring the, um, this prog process um, uh, on. Moreover, it is not only about deaf people or people with disabilities, of course, but uh, it is um, the project aims at developing a, a method for the development of accessible products and initiatives so that uh, everyone could benefit um, of. So if we are able to create um, projects uh, with, um, uh, with deaf people, we are sure that uh, those, the results of this collaboration could, be, could create more uh, accessible and effective uh, communication uh, dissemination products also for everybody. And yourself. Thanks very much. <laughs> so that's it. Um, I just gave you an overview. As I mentioned, the project is brand new. So uh, we, we will keep you posted, uh, keep the community posted with the results. We are interested as research scientists, not only for the dissemination of our activities as marine researcher. I am a physical oceanographer at uh, ISMAR, but uh, uh, also researchers from the linguistic component of our institution will uh, get in to help us understanding also how the process of communication develops uh, through time. So thank you very much. I'm very happy that uh, the next keynote will be given by Valeria. That is really the key person for this project. <laughs> Thanks very much, um, Paula and Angela. I think this was a fantastic uh, scene setting for our discussion. Um, really speaking about different 
languages, body language, uh, words language, sign language, and the feeling of the audience. And I think this probably is um, going to be taken up in our discussions later. Um, I will now um, introduce our keynote speaker, uh, Valeria Bataliko, who is Head of Education and Accessibility Program for TBA21 Academy's Ocean Space. You've just seen the picture uh, in uh, Angela's presentation. It's a nonprofit organization for catalyzing ocean literacy research and advocacy through arts. Uh, Valeria is an art historian and philologist specialized in human rights, education, and accessibility. As a professional, she has over 10 years of experience in designing, facilitating, and managing innovative and inclusive public programs, educational projects, and participatory community events for different cultural organizations. So we're thrilled to have Valeria giving a keynote for today's session with us. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Dina, and thank you, Angela. Uh, I'm Valeria Botolico, and I'm very, it, uh, it's uh, with my great pleasure that I, I take this uh, keynote lecture, and I'm so excited uh, to, to talk with you later uh, in the discussion. And um, I think it's very, very important to have um, a slot on inclusive communication and above all accessibility. With the launch of the Abecedarium, the Ocean in Sign Language, we start with the uh, accessibility program and inclusive uh, communication for ocean literacy with TBA 21 Academy at Ocean Space in Venice. I'm in Italy in this moment in Venice. And uh, so uh, TBA 21 Academy with Ocean Space wants to contribute to this uh, immense task of care for the ocean by proposing itself as an educational resource for everyone from school community to families, adolescents, adults, students, people with disabilities and above all professionals because accessibility uh, include everyone. So this is uh, our effort uh, Above all, I share my screen. Okay. So, as we all know, the ocean is a, in a danger and we are all called to act. But to be able to care, it is absolutely fundamental that everybody has access to the scientific knowledge created without excluding anyone because we all need to be involved in safeguarding the planet and everyone must have the information and tools to access it. So uh, the, our uh, vision and uh, our principle to follow is this article 27 from the Universal Dec Declaration of Human Rights. Everyone has the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefit. It's not, uh, um, it is not an act of solidarity or pity, but a duty on our part and a right to knowledge for everyone. So the ocean includes each of us. All of us are involved in the most urgent issues of our time. And this in, it's important to contribute to the dissemination and accessibility, for example, for deaf people, but also for, for all of a scientific and non-scientific information to help self safeguard the planet because we are involved uh, to this. And this, for example, Abecedarium, it's not a project for a special audience, but it's uh, from uh, an abecedarium, from starting to a glossary, with a glossary, we start to, to involve everyone in the process of the knowledge of uh, ocean literacy. So how? Key word of design making is accessibility. It's a Latin word, accede, from accede, access, accessum, ac accessum. Go all. Um, Accessibility represents the right of every citizen to enjoy cultural and scientific heritage by removing all barriers, which ones physical, cultural, 
methodology, sensory, linguistic, and communication, and also, of course, economic. Because if we have uh, uh, closing information, closing projects, it's uh, difficult to, to involve everyone, no? Accessibility so means uh, welcome to all, comfort, inclusive communication, and the, applica the application of the principles of accessibility to heritage generates environments, services, communication, and events accessible to all, promoting benefit of the territory, at the same time, an improvement of uh, uh, in living conditions. How to generate inclusive communication? This morning, I want to introduce you some instruments, uh, starting from the sign language, but also uh, other form to communicate. Uh, uh, for example, we are working on audiobooks for blind and visually impaired people, on uh, easy to eat tests for people with a, a cognitive problem or mental problem. Uh, so I introduce these instruments because it's important to start from the beginning, uh, also from the glossary, but also uh, from the instruments. So what creates accessibility are facilitators, physical environment accessible, appropriate assistive technologies and equipment, positive attitudes of people towards disability and all, because accessibility is not, so, uh, not only for people uh, with disabilities, but for all, of course, and proper services and above all policies. Uh, it's important to have uh, a open vision, an oceanic vision, no? Uh, we talk around this. Inclusive communication for all uh, would be a gratifying experience for those uh, approaching information for the first time. Have a properly trained and dedicated staff. This is very important uh, to have a training before uh, to use and to approach to accessibility provide organized and specific information, different, modulated for different audiences, adults and elder, elderly, children and teens, professionals, and of course, people with disabilities. Supporting materials like um, simplified illustrations, uh, for the uh, models, sign language video information for deaf, um, and, those, and of course, if we take uh, educational workshop, uh, make this um, uh, accessible and inclusive for all. Kids, families, students, uh, teachers. So everything around accessibility, it's important to, to involve everyone. The information should be designed taking in uh, to account some general criteria related to the principles of design for all and accessibility in general. So access to information must be guaranteed in tactile form with the braille text and relief instruments, in visual form in large print text for visually impaired, for example, or for elderly and symbols and also in videos in sign languages for deaf community and um, also in verbal form in audio format down the ball in a website from an app from our um, um, digital uh, information of course inclusive communication based on the principle of access to material and virtual scientific knowledge to different audiences with, the, with and without disabilities through a series of actions and different facilitators and, deal, and levels of communication. Should aim to promote the social and educational role of science, especially at this time of great change. So our idea is that the ocean uh, is uh, like a physical, social, political connector as a space that includes everyone. So the ocean is like a, no, our um, permanent collection. We are not a, really a museum, but uh, a place when people can meet and reflect together on um, these uh, issues. So the ocean is a, 
uh, it's important, uh, um, the vision of the ocean, it's important to include uh, uh, everyone. But uh, 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 which are the um, the instruments no? to to be uh, to create uh, an inclusive communication and uh, to do our information uh, completely uh, accessible uh, for all. For example, uh, first we have access uh, in tactile form to blind and visual impaired people, but it's important no? also to involve uh, uh, kids. Uh, with families, you know, uh, to use a, a multi-sensorial approach. Um, for example, uh, we can produce uh, information materials for the blind and visually impaired and usable by all adults and children in tactile format with audio, with QR code system or downloadable uh, audio and in large print text for visual impaired. Um, uh, so, for example, we can produce a, a booklet with text in Braille alphabet in different languages. Uh, we are producing, a, of course, in Italian and English uh, in Venice, for example. And uh, Braille alphabet is a, a writing system for blind people based on combinations uh, of uh, uh, raised uh, dots. And you can see a picture in the slide, no? Uh, in, on the left, there's a, a, a man that uh, uh, is reading a, um, a booklet completely in Braille. Uh, but on the right, you can see uh, the hand of a kid that uh, um, he's, he's uh, touching a, a tactile book uh, with the drawings in relief. And this is important for uh, not only for uh, for the blind, for example, but it's important objects, tactile, explorable uh, drawings for everyone because uh, this co this direct contact it's important to to create uh, a relationship, a strictly relationship, on uh, our um, information, uh, on our uh, subjects that uh, are communicate, uh, communicating. Also, uh, access in visual form for people with the cognitive impairment or without tools to access a specialized language. Language, for example, scientific language, it's not for all. Because, uh, for example, I'm an art historian, I'm a philologist, but not a biologist, and I'm studying, you know, to 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 facilitate some uh, information for everyone through through the artistic uh, uh, language and uh, uh, through all this uh, uh, type uh, of uh, access form um, uh, to 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 involve everyone in our, for example. Um, uh, dissemination or artistic topics or scientific topics. But uh, um, for example, in the Abecedarium, the, the project of uh, for deaf people, uh, when we opened the call uh, to invite deaf people to, to participate in this uh, building of the glossary, uh, deaf people have scared uh, about uh, uh, scientific uh, issues because it's uh, difficult to understand sometimes, no? Um, and this is important, for example, use text in easy to read. Easy to read is a language that helps people to read and understand difficult information and is important for the life of people, of course, with disabilities and, and their caregivers, but also for anyone without necessary cultural tools to understand the contents of the, of the path of the uh, information. Helps people um, uh, find the things they need to know. And this uh, uh, easy to read test um, uh, follow um, some uh, graphic uh, uh, rules, for example, uh, with paragraph, simple uh, uh, sentences, and it's important to involve uh, uh, in uh, doing uh, the um, producing this text. Uh, also, people with the with the mental disabilities, 
uh, because it's important the approach that nothing, uh, nothing about, uh, no, the, the, the motto is nothing about me without me. Uh, it's important no, to involve uh, directly peop uh, people with disabilities, but also, for example, kids. No? And um, we need to, to test, to verify if our information is really accessible to all no? before uh, to, to share with uh, or to launch a new project. This is very, very important. Um, and also, for example, for people that, can, that uh, they have a problem with verbal communication, for example, people with the autism, but not only. Uh, it's important uh, to use text in CAA, Alternative Augmentative Communication. Uh, um, they are descriptive cards in symbols, uh, like uh, uh, in the pictures, where next to next are placed just symbols that visually represent the meaning of the word itself. For example, there are uh, children and adults who, for different reasons, manifest a difficulty or inability to communicate uh, verbally. And in these cases, the use of uh, images and symbols can increase the possibilities of communication and participation, uh, participation of the visitor with complex uh, communication needs. And um, I'm working to, to translate uh, the seven uh, principles of ocean literacy in uh, CAA and also in easy to read because I think it's very, very important to, to introduce this, these uh, issues uh, in schools, uh, in uh, our workshop. And I think it's important uh, um, if uh, we, we really want to, to share um, uh, and to safeguard the, the, the ocean. And uh, of course, it's important to, to use uh, another uh, visual form no, of uh, accessibility, the sign languages. Sign languages uh, are languages that uh, convey their meaning through a coded uh, system. It's uh, completely um, a language with the grammar um, and the use uh, uh, hand signs. Uh, facial expressions and the body movements. They are used by sign uh, communities to which most deaf people belong. And it is a form of communication uh, that contains verbal aspects, signs, and nonverbal aspects, uh, subject seg segmental expressions to, of uh, intonation, for example, like all spoken or sign languages. Uh, for example, to share all the information of, uh, of the results of our project uh, in Abecedarium um, after, uh, the, after the, the training for deaf uh, people, um, uh, we, we will um, uh, produce uh, a series of uh, video uh, completely accessible for all with the subtitle in Italian and in English. Uh, in uh, with a deaf interpreter uh, in um, Italian sign language, but also in uh, international sign language and um, uh, with the audio, because it's important for everyone to understand what we are, uh, uh, what we are doing and, of course, the, the glossary. So it's important that this, this uh, visual form to, to, um, to explain and um, uh, to, to involve completely deaf people because uh, the deaf community is really, really close. And, but they are super interested on scientific uh, knowledge. So we need to, to be inclusive uh, uh, for all, like in this picture because it's important to give a voice to the ocean and make sure that it is heard. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> Thank you very much, Valeria. I learned a lot. <laughs> it's a short time, short to the 20 minutes are so short to, to explain all the instruments, but I think this is an overview 
a general overview on these topics. Um, I will um, open the floor um, in a second. Uh, and we also have some, I'm trying to see if there are any questions in the chat box. <laughs> If there are any, um, there are also some questions already outlined in the program as potential discussion points. But first, I, I was intrigued by uh, you mentioned Valeria of the easy to read uh, language. Can you uh, just speak a little bit about that? What what is that? Is that a, a sort of language that exists, or is it an approach, a methodology to make it easy to read? It's an approach, it's a method no? to explain uh, in very simple uh, mm, uh, in very simple language, our language, Italian or other languages, uh, it's verbal communication and uh, follow a graphic uh, um, format. No? We, um, we use uh, one sentence uh, with subject, uh, verb, and object. It's very, uh, very short, uh, with very short uh, sentence. Um, for example, um, I'm Valeria Botalico. Valeria Botalico is an expert on accessibility. Accessibility is uh, a very simple approach to explain uh, some things. Uh, uh, accessibility, it's important to involve everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, accessibility, no, this is uh, uh, the method to, to, to write uh, and um, easy to read the text. And it's useful for kids, for example, for people, for science, it's important to explain step by step all the process of the uh, on uh, of the, um, some topic, for example, no? Not to jump to conclusion too early that your audience knows what you're speaking about, really start from the beginning. I think it's very interesting for, for, for communication. Um, you, you also mentioned that uh, there were some, uh, and I think uh, uh, being congratulated, you are being congratulated. Um, uh, I think Angela also mentioned the, um, and, and as well Paula, the unwillingness uh, to engage from the communities uh, with who you want to try to engage, either the deaf community or um, people who are in the hospitals who don't really ask you to come, but then you come. How, how do you, how maybe between uh, the three of our speakers today, how do you overcome these constraints of, uh, of unwillingness? How do you break this uh, barrier, which, which is an important one? And also, um, maybe that could cause potentially um, your own unwillingness to continue because uh, if you're not uh, greeted with enthusiasm, do you really want to, to keep on? What, how do you find this kind of uh, balance between uh, you being uh, constantly supported despite that there is no obvious support from your audience from the start and also triggering their uh, engagement? Paola, would you like to start? Because you gave the first presentation. I have something okay. to add. OK, yeah. Um, well, as I said, we, we try in a softer way at the beginning. Like uh, we, we try, for example, with uh, shaping a balloon and give it to the person that at the moment says, no, I do not want anything. And that may be something that uh, after a small uh, time uh, gets into the, the attention and makes a, a small break in the in the wall that you have in front of you and allows to arrive that um, to the to the person uh, we are actually also the, there are situations where actually also the no means no and we do not uh, uh, force of course uh, if it's a uh, the person doesn't want, but usually it's just a prejudice at the beginning that, okay, we do not want it, we do not want you here. You just need to, you know, as I said, a softer way, uh, maybe, yeah, just the smiles or, uh, as I said, simple things to give and then the, 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 the eyes is break and then that's it. <laughs> and then you follow. Uh, I also have some experience on this, uh, and this is uh, what made uh, really effective the effort of uh, trying to develop art and science uh, projects. Uh, I cannot say more about this uh, abecedarium because we are. This is a brand new challenge. <laughs> we are going to to start with Valeria, but also. Um, 
we found that the partnership with art was really um, really uh, effective in breaking uh, the this uh, um, access uh, limit that people are, is feeling when uh, uh, accessing uh, scientific research uh, contents. Uh, we experienced that also with our open days. Uh, so if we uh, if you go to an open day, you are, of course, willing to learn something or curious. So you are already in the mood for uh, experimenting something new. But really, um, people entering the Institute in those days uh, were um, looking somehow afraid of uh, being in a place they are not uh, um, really uh, ready to, to experiment. And the way um, we managed to create a connection to start a dialogue was really that we uh, were uh, putting questions towards them or uh, uh, try to, to involve them in a discussion. And when you manage to break this uh, separation, this invisible separation that uh, is uh, still there because uh, of um, afraid, because of um, people is afraid to, to, to touch something, uh, a, new, a new subject, or uh, because they maybe believe that they are not uh, so, uh, their knowledge is not enough to access some content. So if you start the discussion and involve them, try to involve them in a dialogue, then it changes completely the way you, get, you are able to go in depth in a specific uh, subject. So art in this way, according to our experience, was uh, uh, magical because uh, people uh, do not feel they are entering really a sci science uh, uh, world. Uh, there is a scientific content, but it is mediated somehow through art, and this makes uh, the world uh, more. Um, mm, these are people feeling it is more um, close to them or more uh, really thought for them. So this is. Um, really something we experienced. Thank you very much. What uh, yeah, um, someone in the chat box, uh, chat box uh, uh, wrote uh, if uh, uh, something created for blind and deaf or deaf communities, how is perceived by non-blind or non-deaf communities? It is useful too for them. Yes, of course, because first of all, like Angela uh, told, uh, it increased the attention and involvement because we are not used to know and experiment new languages. But when we get close to them, we are attracted you know, by them. And it's completely new. When I start to work, for example, on tactile relief or instruments with the, the blind community, all the people, all the visitors, for example, in a museum, stop to visit, uh, stop to, to, um, to see the, the paintings, for example, uh, in a museum, to, because uh, uh, they want to touch. No? It's a direct, the direct experience. It's uh, useful for all of us. The multisensory approach completely involve uh, everyone uh, in all the knowledge processes no and this is important i i can imagine no in uh, in the hospital with the clown no uh, therapy no to 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 introduce storytelling information no it's important to to involve a create relationship with the other and this is the key uh, of the accessibility the method, the training, the instruments are completely important, of course, but it's important first create a relationship with the audience, no? to involve uh, in, all the, in all the process. And when we produce uh, text, material, workshop, we need to, to verify, to test with the, with the others, of course, before and modulate um, and change uh, because the accessibility is not forever, but change with the evolution of people, of the thinking, of the experiences. And this is very, very important. Pragmatically, what do you think uh, we as a community of ocean uh, literacy um, 
engaged people, <laughs> some are scientists, some are communicators, already different disciplines right, right here at this workshop. Uh, what kind of training, what kind of um, things we need to learn and what would be the ways for us to, to learn them? Uh, what do you think? What, what would be the next, the next uh, step for us to try to be more accessible? Uh, first of all, I think it's important to, to which uh, target of audience uh, do you want to uh, no, to, to, to tell, no? Uh, because uh, it's uh, very difficult to, to, to know all the instruments and all the accessibility process. For example, I'm specialized in uh, easy to read, in sign language and uh, tactile um, producing of um, uh, material for the blind, but there are a lot of instruments. So first we, uh, we need to, to choose uh, which target and we, we need to, to know all the needs that this specific target, uh, uh, the feedback, the desiderata, no? the, the, the needs and uh, the, the dreams. And uh, when we know uh, all these uh, informations, uh, we need to know uh, which instrument, which um, uh, instrument uh, this kind of uh, people uh, need. And we, uh, we need to work in this direction. And of course, we need to, to have uh, a training before with the specialist, and um, yeah, this is the, the direction, I think. Thank you. So, so know, know who you're talking to and, 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 and engage with them. It really resonated very strongly with me what you said. Nothing about me should be without me. So uh, if you do something for, for someone or with some vision, you need to engage uh, with those people in designing what will work for them. And this actually resonates strongly with much broader discussion on uh, multidisciplinarity and engagement in, in ocean research and in, uh, ocean science day for sustainable development. I think we are uh, about to close. Um, so we heard about the importance of filling the audience, uh, engaging with professionals from other disciplines. Really what is exciting in, about, in, in ocean literacy is that it brings many things to the table. And in addition to the importance of knowledge and understanding, it brings the importance of values, of gratitude to the ocean, to the people working with it, of connectiveness, and the importance of openness, inclusivity, and accessibility. So we very much thank you, all participants and the speakers, for attending today. We hope that the conversation on accessibility will continue and that uh, there are some lessons learned for all of us from today's talk. And, uh, we keep these uh, thoughts going and probably, hopefully, enriching our activities on ocean literacy and communication. Thank you very much. This is thank you. Thank you. Thank you.